بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our study of كتاب في الإيمان للإيمان أبي عبيد القاسم بن سلام الحروي Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah Who died 224 Hijri And again as we mentioned in the beginning Or the first lesson That this was over 1,200 years ago Approximately 1,013 years ago uh, 1,213 years ago approximately and so it shows us this treatise gives us a glimpse, an important indication of how the Salaf of this Ummah, how they practiced the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and established the Ittikad. <coughs> ittikad of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And this particular treatise of Abi Ubaid is illustrative of some of the issues and challenges that the Salaf had, some of the first bid'ah that appeared in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Alaihi Wasallam, the first bid'ah was that of the Khawarij, who used to make takfir of the people for major sins. And then the Shia, and you had the Qadariya, and you had various groups, and all of those groups, even from the beginning, to a greater or lesser extent, had issues dealing with Iman. So issues, and this is why you'll find in many of the books of the Salaf, you'll find that they wrote about issues of al-asma'i wa sifat as far as Tawheed, that uh, their books about Tawheed generally concerned, they were concerned with al-asma'i wa sifat, the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is where Ahl al-Bid'ah uh, deviated and began to challenge the creed of Ahl sunnah and likewise, issues of Iman. And so that's why you have books like this, Kitab Fil Iman, because these were the important issues that Ahlul Sunnah had to defend the Ittiqad of Ahlul Sunnah from Ahlul Bid'ah, that they were challenging, they began to challenge Ahlul Sunnah and the Orthodox belief from these various ways. And as we mentioned, those two ways are by... Uh, making ta'wil or negating the divine uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also by deviating in Iman and defining Iman. And that's why this treatise has such a great importance. And before we get into the text itself, we should have a little bit of background about some of the to give us further concept, uh, context and insight into the treaties, into the time uh, uh, Abu Qasim or Abi Qasim that he lived and those challenges that they, the Salaf faced in Iman. This is why you'll have a lot of athar, a lot of narrations of the Salaf dealing with these issues of Sifat, issues of Iman, uh, and issues the other issues that you'll find in the great books of Aqidah that they had to deal with because these were practical issues. These were not issues that were hypothetical uh, uh, issues, but rather they were real threats to the Islamic Aqidah when you had various people coming into Islam with various understandings, people who were not Arab, who didn't know the language, and they brought in their baggage, so to speak, and their philosophies and ideologies, and all of this challenged the Orthodox Creed. It all set up a way of challenging the Orthodox Creed, that which 
comes from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in accordance with the understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum And as we mentioned some of the text, for example, the Hadith of Iftiraq where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Iftiraqat al-Yahuda la ithu wa sab'in firqa wa iftiraqat al-Nasara la thinatayn wa sab'in firqa wa sa taftariku hadhi umar ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa kullaha fin nar ila wahida kullaha man hiya ya Rasulullah qala man kana ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi wa ashabi that hadith illustrates for us, you know, where the Prophet ﷺ said the Jews break into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. And then the companions with their hirs, their vigilance and seeking knowledge, they ask, men, here ya Rasulullah, who is this sect that you're talking about? Who is this saved sect? You know, who are they? You know, what characteristics? Because we want to be from them. The Prophet ﷺ answered, he said, those who are upon what I'm upon, meaning his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the sunnah of his companions, and the way of his companions. In another hadith, uh, the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned that the way to the ilaj, or the solution for our mushakil, our, our, our problems, and our, our fitna that we face is returning to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and with the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin, what they were upon, and holding on to it with the molar teeth, as we mentioned in the, the prior sitting. So it's very important. We have to know and understand uh, the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which Mustanid, it comes from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And so during the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the advent of Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, the people were divided into three categories basically. During the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially in the time of Mecca when he received the message Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the people were either uh, disbelievers, kuffar, or they were uh, mu'mineen believers. And then at the stage of Medina, they were further divided into three categories. And that third category would be munafiqun, meaning people who professed uh, Islam on their tongues, but their insides uh, do not attest to Islam, that they don't believe in Islam. And so those were the munafiqun. And so those were the three categories with regards to people and that also has a direct import on, Islam, on uh, what we define as Iman. And from the Bab of Faida, which is a great Faida, you know, I was just listening to uh, a couple of the different Mashaikh uh, speaking about this issue in their explanation of this text. And one of the Fawaid I got from one of our mashayikh is that he mentioned that in the beginning of Islam that it was that Iman had a different what defined Iman was different than what we know to be Iman now as the full categories of Iman or the full uh parts of Iman, that it was as everything in Islam, the, the revelation was in stages. And likewise, Iman was in stages. As Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions about uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he said, أَخَذَ عَلَى هَذَا عَشْرَ سِنِينَ يَدْعُوا إِلَى تَوْحِيدِ وَبَادَ عَشْرَ عُرِجَ بِهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ وَفُرِدَتْ عَلَيْهِ صَلَوَاتُ الْخَمْسِ uh, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى he mentions about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was on calling to Tawheed for 10 years in Mecca. At this time, Iman was defined by what? By just uh, a belief in the heart. Because there was no open ibadah at that time. It wasn't you know, the mishru'iyah of salat, the obligation of salat, wasn't 
until after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam urija bihi ala sama that he went to the heavens and that's when the salawat al-khams the five daily prayers was legislated so that shows us as Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz Arais Arais he mentions Hafizullah Ta'ala about this that in the early stages of Islam Iman had a different context that Iman at that stage was uh, defined by belief in the heart and that's what you have from the Jews and the Christians and many people when they say they have faith in God or faith in whatever that what they mean is it's something in their heart so for them, it's not a matter of practice. Where in Islam, as we see as the Qur'an was revealed, as a Prophet ﷺ made hijrah, as these obligations became obligations, uh, uh, prayer and psalm and the other aspects of ibadah, then that showed us that it, uh, Islam, it developed as Iman developed as well. And Iman became also as Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'a defines it, especially in contemporary times, they define it as a qawl al-lisan wa amal bil qalb wa amal bil jawarih or kama qil. That Ahlul Sunnah, they define Iman as being of three parts or three categories, if you will. And that is belief in the heart and, you know, that's actions or ibadah of the heart, you know, tawakkul, uh, tawassal, uh, you know, uh, you know, with your, your niya and all of those actions and ikhlas, all of these actions of the heart that are things you can't really measure outwardly. You, you ne cannot necessarily uh, gauge how much uh, tawakkul someone has outwardly. Not accurately, but this is a matter of ibadah qalbiyah, you know, it's something of the heart. And likewise, that iman is on the tongue. And that could be everything from dhikr, from declaring the shahada, and all of those actions of the tongue. That's a form of ibadah, and that's a form of iman, that makes up iman. Likewise, the third category being uh, al-amal bi jawarih, that it is actions of the limbs and I believe we talked about this in the first uh, in the first sitting so it's very important for us to get an understanding so for the context of this treatise and with regards to the differences and this is how this sets the context for the Kitab Fil Iman by uh, Imam Abi Ubaid Al Qasim the way this sets the context is because he is clarifying what the itikad of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is in his text. And his text is really, he was writing it as a refutation of the Murjia al Fuqaha. And we'll talk uh, a bit about that as we. Uh, before we get into the treaty, so that way we can set the context. So, as far as the differences in explanation of Iman, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, Imam Ibn Abi Al Iz Al Hanafi, he mentions about Iman, and of course, he was influenced as many of the Hanafis are, and that you'll find a, a group of them, especially in the early times, including Imam Abu Hanifa, as some of the scholars mention. And there is some differences, and some say he, he left and he had the aqid of Ahlul Sunnah with regards to Iman, and some say Imam Abu Hanifa, Akhta, he made a mistake in the battle of Iman. And this is what we find from many of the Hanafis, and they hold a view such as this. So Imam uh, Abi Iz, he said, uh, Ibn Abi Iz al Iz uh, al Hanafi, rahmatullah alayhi he said, opinions differ as to what Iman means. Imam Malik, a Shafi'i, Ahmed, uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal ibn Rahawayh, and the scholars of Ahl al Hadith, the scholars of Ahl al Medina, as well as the Vahiriya, believe that Iman is to affirm, tasdeeq, in the heart to declare with the tongue 
and to act with the body. So this is one goal. And this is the goal of, of Ahl Sunnah. That Iman is, as we mentioned, tasdik in the heart. It's, you know, believing in the heart, affirming in the heart, uh, attesting on the tongue, and actions of the limbs, you know, actions of physical ibadat. And then he said, many Hanafis, on the other hand, believe what Imam at Tahawi said, namely, that Iman is to declare with the tongue and affirm in the heart. Uh, some even say that oral decl declaration does not form part of the essence of Iman, only an extra pillar of, his, of Iman. And this is the view of Abu Mansur al-Maturidi. So it's very important for us to get an understanding and the context that uh, there was basically, in general, we could say two general uh, aqwal, and then they even further divide, especially the 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 goal of Ahl Bid'a and the mistaken goal. And we mentioned the goal of Ahl Sunnah that Iman is comprised of those three categories, if you will, or three parts or three components. And as we mentioned, the murjia and those known as the murjia of Fuqaha, they basically have the view in various different forms that iman uh, that iman is that actions are not a part of iman that actions are not a part of iman they're outside of iman they are still of course from islam and you should do actions and it depends on the level of their inner jah. it depends on how they have deviated with regards to the creed of ahl sunnah and iman and so you have their view basically that Iman is the tongue and an affirmation of the heart. So a statement of the tongue. So for example, someone says the Shahada and then they may have outwardly all kind of fisk and sins, but they only say, you know, you don't know what's in my heart. This is a, a statement which is muafiq or it's in agreement with the uh, aqida of the of the murjia because they believe that iman as one group of them believes that iman is statements of the tongue and is the affirmation of the heart 